and uh, thank you for having me uh, on this presentation. To do this presentation on authenticating open source cloud applications with LDAP. So let me just, uh, how do I change the slide here? Mm -hmm. Just give me one second, I'm trying to figure out how do I change the slide. <clears throat> All right, uh, I hope every, everybody can see the slide. Uh, so I'm uh, just a few words about myself. My name is uh, Isha Sukan. I'm a systems architect at Las Nortina Limited, a media company in Mauritius. I, I am an open source member since 2009. I'm also in the uh, in election official in the open source election committee. Uh, recently, I've got a very fun project. Uh, I've been uh, setting up uh, open source mirrors in Africa and in Indian Ocean islands. Uh, I have a keen interest in number of resources, uh, policy discussions within the Afrinic region. So that's about me. Let's come about. Uh, let's come on this presentation now. So LDAP. It stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, which is an industry standard application protocol. Um, to access directory uh, services and directory information. So LDAP itself per se is not a server, okay? LDAP is a protocol. It is drafted by the Internet Engineering, Engineering Task Force, uh, and it is uh, very well specified and defined in RFC 4511. But um, <clears throat> in order for us to use this protocol, to use LDAP, we need a server. And some of the popular implementations of LDAP uh, uh, LDAP, or 389 directory server, Open LDAP, and Apache directory server. There are a few others, uh, but I guess these three are the most uh, popular ones, and they are almost everywhere. Anyone using, at least, yeah, using <coughs> LDAP. Uh, so, in OpenSUSE, if you want to use the 389 directory server, it's pretty straightforward. It is already in the OpenSUSE repositories. So zipper install it, install, and 389-DS will install the server for you. And the next thing that you need to do is uh, to start an, an instance of that server <coughs> using the, uh, the command DS create interactive. <coughs> Sorry. In this one, uh, it's going to start, uh, how do you call that? <clears throat> An interactive mode where you will get a set of questions on how you want to set up your uh, directory server. And once that done, it will be up and running. Uh, you can verify that uh, port 389 and port 636 are open. 389 is, uh, how do you call that? Unencrypted, it is basic, it is plain text. And 636, <clears throat> Over this one, uh, the directory server is going to run, uh, uh, all the communication are going to be encrypted. It is going to generate a self-signed certificate, which of course you can replace it by a proper one uh, later on. So <clears throat> now you have a directory server. How do you access that directory server and you start browsing it and you start you know, uh, creating resources? So to use that, one of the popular, uh, not popular, but one of the tools that I found uh, which very easy to use is Apache Directory Studio. It is open source, it's free to use, it's based on Eclipse, so you will need to have Java on your machine to run it. <clears throat> and uh, it's a uh, uh, cross-platform, you have it for Linux, for Mac OS, and for Windows, but unfortunately on the latest Apple M1 Silicon, it's not supported. Uh, also, if you are using uh, uh, an, uh, an ARC, uh, like ARC based uh, processor, it's not going to work. So, this is a screenshot of Apache Directory Studio running, and uh, it's pretty straightforward how to use it. <clears throat> but if you're new to uh, LDAP uh, or anything uh, regarding directory, 
services, I would highly recommend to check this blog by uh, William Brown. Uh, he's a he's a system he's an engineer at SUSE itself, uh, and he wrote very good documentation about uh, uh, LDAP. <clears throat> also, he has uh, developed a. How do you call that? I think uh, it's not a directory server, but it is an implementation of directory server. It's called Canadian. Cani, uh, it's written in Rust, and Cani stands for, I think in Japanese, it's, it stands for crab. And since the mascot of Rust, the Rust project is a crab, he, he called this project uh, Canadian. So Canadian basically, it, it is a way for, for people to organize resources, uh, users, uh, user access, uh, user specifications, definitions, etc. And Canadian makes it available in different uh, uh, formats, such as you can have OOF, you can have LDAP, you can have several other formats uh, for which you can query the directory server. And uh, okay, let's come back to, uh, to 389 directory server. <clears throat> Typically what I do when uh, when I run it and I have to, to connect to it, I just use uh, an SSH tunnel. So this is the, a pretty straightforward command to, to, to create a tunnel to access the directory server running on port 389 to have it locally. And then you can use Apache Directory Studio to connect to it. So here uh, <clears throat> you can create a new LDAP connection using the Directory Studio. And since uh, I have already created a channel, I just have to specify it, specify it as localhost and put the, uh, the local port that I have specified in the progress command. And uh, I should be good to go. The next step would be to, to provide the authentication, uh, the details. So yes, here I'm, I'm binding to the LDAP using uh, the default, uh, uh, how do you call that, the default account. Uh, on the directory server, which is something that when you run DS create in interactive mode, it is going to ask you these questions about creating the first uh, uh, administrative account. We call it uh, uh, the directory manager. Like it's a, it's a standard. It's not compulsory to call it like that, but it's just a standard. So yes, uh, using Studio, you create uh, a new Cube connection. You specify. Uh, the, the password, and then you're good to go. So uh, DS Create uh, interactive mode also allows you to create some sample, uh, uh, how do you call that? Resources, yes, sample resources. So by default, if you do that, uh, you're going to have some resources like people. It's already, it's already, already going to create um, a user resource in that, uh, and you can play around. Uh, in the default setup, you you will have a <clears throat> a user resource, but uh, that your user resource will not have uh, email addresses and passwords. So to create those attributes, you can simply right click anywhere um, within the direct directory studio window, and uh, you select new attribute here, and uh, voila, you can for to add an email address to that user account. You can just type mail. Uh, Press next and specify the email address. Uh, also, to to set a user password for that account, you can do the same thing. Right click, uh, select new attribute, and uh, just specify it. User password. And uh, one thing I must say here is um, when you are using Directory Studio, uh, whenever you are adding a new attribute, once you start typing, it's going to give you hints. What are the different uh, options uh, to not options. What are the different possibilities of attributes that you can you can specify in this specific resource? So, okay, I have my user password uh, attribute set. I can specify uh, a password now, and I can select a different kind of hash method. So, uh, MD5, SHA. Th there is a, a a list of hash methods there from which you can select one. So that's it. I have my uh, directory to. I have my directory server running. I have some sample resources in that. I can use those resources to connect uh, some cloud applications.
okay but before doing that uh normally when we bind uh this is a keyword that we usually use if we need to connect if we if we need to use uh uh, to make a cloud application to connect to a, an LDAP server, we use this technical word bind. So to bind it, we don't really use an account that has uh, full administrative access. For example, the directory manager account has full administrative access. It can uh, create new resources, can modify resources, it can even delete resources. So if we are allowing a cloud application to connect to, to the server, definitely, Probably we don't want to uh, that application uh, to have such kind of, of of privileges. Probably we just want them to have read only privileges. So in order to do that, <clears throat> you can do it from the command line. Use the ldap modify uh, command, uh, and you use the directory manager account to connect to it. But and as from there, uh, you will see here. I don't know if everybody can see this on the screen, but here I'm saying on the on this resource, people, uh, DC, OSC, 39DS, and Hacklog uh, DC in, that is on this people resource, I'm giving access to uh, the user UI define underscore user. So this particular user is going to get uh, uh, what I'm allowing. Here you can see I'm allowing read access. So this user, bind user, is going to only be able to read on the people resource. So all user accounts that I'm going to create are going to be stored in this people resource. And the bind user will be able to read all of those. Typically, a user can read only his or her uh, account, not account, but resource. For example, if I create a resource called, called ish, I will be able to read only mine, all the attributes that are defined in my, in my account, in my resource. I won't be able to read for another another resource. But here we are allowing this bind user to be able to read every resource that is under the uh, under people. So now we have done that. <clears throat> uh, this is something I wanted to say if you want to just simply test it, you can uh, you can spin a, a next cloud container and start fiddling around to see how you can use uh, LDAP with next cloud. So uh, once you have your next cloud running, what you have to do is uh, you go uh, in settings and uh, you add a new app. And under disable apps, you will see that there is LDAP user and group backend. Uh, it's, well, it, since it is disabled, uh, you just have to enable it and uh, you will be able to, to use uh, held up with your next cloud. But before you do this, it's very important that you have uh, the PHP LDAP library. So whether you're running uh, an X cloud on, on OpenSUSE or on any other Linux distribution, make sure that you have the PHP LDAP uh, module enabled. Uh, otherwise, this particular uh, uh, app in Nextcloud you won't be able to enable it. it already if you come here the enable button will be grayed out and it will say that you need to enable not enable you need to have the php ldap module you know in order to have this particular app in the in the back end once that is set up you go on settings and you click uh, uh, if you scroll further down on the left side of the menu there is uh, uh, some it's, uh, it's called ldap and you click on that uh, on that, you will be able to do LDAP and Active Directory integration. So not only you will be able to use Nextcloud with uh, uh, LDAP authentication, uh, an LDAP server that is running on another Linux machine, but you can also use Nextcloud and the, uh, using this particular app to connect it to an Active Directory server. So here, um, you have to specify the server and the, the port uh, here. Well, uh, it's not very secure to just to simply use the 389 port because everything is unencrypted. Uh, typically, you would use the 686 port, but for the for the purpose of this test, for the demo while I was preparing this presentation, I simply you know spent a container and I said, okay, I can use it over the 389 port. Oh, and typically, what you would also do is you will blo block all access to to 
like uh, on all the TCP UDP access uh, to a server and allow only, uh, for example, if you're going to allow access to the 389 uh, port or 686 port, uh, you will allow it to only certain IP addresses. That is, if you have your next cloud server and in some way, maybe you are going to allow uh, um, the inbound uh, traffic on uh, port 389 to that I, to that particular IP of the uh, next cloud server, not anyone from the internet will be able to query this port. And that is why when I had to use the directory studio uh, to connect to the directory server, what I did to the LDAP server, I instead, uh, I did not query directly, but I did uh, an SSH tunnel because like I said, typically you block this port. All right, so this is about the server. You provide the server address, the IP, uh, no, sorry, the port address, and then you provide um, the the bind user. So uh, you, you have to full specify uh, it like this, uh, provide the UID, provide the, the, the full uh, uh, DN of that uh, server, of that resource, uh, sorry, not server, of that resource. And also you provide uh, the base DN. All right, uh, if something goes wrong here uh, at the bottom of the page, it will say configuration incomplete. But since all of these settings are, are perfect, perfectly fine, uh, this page actually auto saves uh, whenever you type something, the configuration, you're modifying it, it will auto save that configuration. And uh, it says that the configuration is okay. And if you continue, then it will, uh, on the next screen, sorry, it's not here. On the next screen, uh, you will be able to set uh, the, the the filter, the kind of filter that you want to have for the users. For example, if you're putting all the users in, in a specific group, let's say you create a group, uh, a group actually is, a, is another resource. It's going to be something like uh, OU equal to uh, next cloud. And then in, in that group, particular group, you want to put a certain number of, of users. So all the users who are in that group will be able to access Nextcloud and users who are not in that, of course, they won't be able. So in order to do that, uh, when, when you click uh, continue, you will be moved to the second part of the window here, uh, of the configuration window, users, where you will be able to specify which of the query uh, filter you want to have. And once that's, that's done, you just click continue you log out and this time you log in with one of the users that you have created in your LDAP, uh, uh, on, on the LDAP server, you will be able to log in. And uh, this is about Nextcloud, but a lot of cloud applications uh, out there uh, do have Next, uh, do have LDAP uh, uh, integration. For example, you have a rocket chat. Uh, and, uh, before all of that, uh, mail servers, if you're setting up a mail server, an IMAP server using DoveGuard, uh, you're going to have um, uh, running postfix uh, to, to, to manage your, your mail server and everything. You can have Nextcloud, uh, sorry, you can have LDAP uh, implementation with that. Or if, you, uh, if you're having a groupware uh, installation uh, using Sogo, Again, with Sogo, you can have your uh, LDAP configuration, LDAP implementation there, and it's going to work flawlessly. So just by having one LDAP server, you can have all these applications connected using the same authentication method. You create the account account once on LDAP, and you can have Nextcloud, Rocket Chart, and your email servers, and your groupware uh, uh, um, users all using the same platform to log in. So that's it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not there. I'm I, I'm not there to be able to do a, a proper a, a proper demo about how to use this. Uh, but I really wanted to share this uh, uh, presentation and explain how people can use LDAP to connect all sorts of cloud applications that have an LDAP implementation. Uh, thank you very much. If there are any questions about uh, this implementation? I'm I'm all ears. And sorry, folks, I'm not checking the uh, the main SAL uh, uh, stage. I'm in the Q and A for SAL channel. Uh, and I don't see any question uh, in the in the chat. 
Uh, I don't have a people in the room there. If you have questions, if you're asking anything, maybe somebody could just put it in the chat here.